what exactly is the meat meat of the word? All right, then. Brother Jordan, we'll let you go first on that one. Yeah, so this one I kind of thought about. Um, and actually, if anyone has their Bibles open, because Renee and I, after the live stream the other day, we were talking about this along with Heather. Um, and I would like to use the New King King James Version for this because I think it says it perfectly with Hebrews 6, 1 through 3. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and faith towards God, of the doctrines of baptism, of baptisms, of laying on of hands, of the resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. So when we're talking about the elementary uh, teachings, we're talking about the milk. And, you know, that is essentially what we are drinking as babes in Christ. And you know, so many people are guilty of not expanding beyond the milk, and it's because of legalism. So many people keep going back to the law. I mean, here we are, a thousand years or two thousand years later, still in the Church of Galatia. Somehow, um, we need to realize that we can't move on to more solid foods until we understand the very basic things of the gospel: that we are saved, we are secure. How is God going to trust us with anything else if we can't even understand the gospel? So the meat would be those more complex teachings. Um, I Some of the, I would assume, would be the next step would be understanding things like the Trinity, the importance of baptism, not as a requirement for salvation, but as your first step of obedience in your walk with Christ. Um and then beyond that is how do you service? How do you rightly divide the word? That's where your meat and your more um, tougher things to chew on come in. Well done, brother. Okay, Sister Renee. Yeah, uh, they, yeah. The foundation is who Jesus is and what he's accomplished. You know why you need him. Basically, uh, uh, you're guilty. You've been separated from God. This is what happened. This is what Jesus did for you. This is the only way to eternal life. The basic foundational truths, right? The gospel, right? That's that's milk. These are basic things. Now, what I see happening is people remain babes. And if we go over to the Corinthian letter where the words meat and uh, milk were used, you can see it. And I, brethren, so I believe the meat is not just like knowing the uh, prophecies that pointed to Christ and studying deep in scripture, but I think the main meat is one, spiritual warfare. Paul teaches the Ephesians how to put on the armor of God. That's meat. Uh, also, um, how to grow in discipleship, how to get your flesh under control. Uh, as we see in Galatians, Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So I believe the meat is getting to that place, teaching people to deny their egos and their self serving and temptations so that they can grow into amazing Christians. Uh, and if we look over here, it says, let me look at 1 Corinthians 3. Uh, and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual. So he can't get into the deeper spiritual things, you know, all the shadows of Christ and how to uh, fight the spiritual war. Uh, he says the principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places, right? He couldn't speak to them as unto spiritual. Jesus said to Nicodemus, you know, if I tell you of earthly things and you don't believe, how am I going to tell you things of heaven and you understand it? So Paul's saying the same thing. It's also to live more in the spirit and less and less in our own self-serving flesh. Uh, so I could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. And I believe a lot of people get saved and bam, that's where they end up. They never grow. And then you got to keep giving them milk. 
because they fall away and some false teacher comes and tells them this and that and gets them scared and they're shaken up and then they never grow. They go in the wrong direction. They get caught up in some other kind of belief uh, uh, or they get shaken in their faith and then they give up. They never grow into the meat and the spiritual truths and growing into a mature Christian that has an answer for the hope they have. They're still on the milk because they fall away and then they uh, go somewhere else and they either join this church. They just never grow. They remain babes in Christ. They are never properly discipled. I have fed you with milk. What, what's that? That's the gospel, the basic truths of the gospel and not with meat. For hitherto, you were not able to bear it. Neither yet are you able. For, are ye, ne uh, for ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? So the thing here I believe that meat does is matures a Christian. That is the goal of the meat. Not just knowledge of the scriptures, but to really have them crucified with Christ and die daily as well as spiritual warfare so over in ephesians he gets into some of these spiritual things put on the whole armor of god that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places so it's don't fight the people you don't want to go at the people they're being used by yeah. these entities so we have spiritual warfare. That's me. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done it all, to stand. So that when your faith is attacked or anything comes at you, you can stand. You have the peace that passes all understanding. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So I believe that is what he means by meat. It is to mature the Christian. And sadly, uh, many of us remain babes in Christ. And instead of discipling them, bringing them back to the milk, and then going to the meat, they just call them unsaved, and that's it. Okay, I got it. I got it. Uh, so that's what I think. Mm -hmm. Well, we well, both uh, did such an excellent answer. Uh, I don't know how I can add anything to it, really. I say amen and amen. Um, I've never really taken the time to try to figure out what the meat is. Uh, to me, uh, I've just basically said the meat, I mean, the, the milk. Uh, are the the core doctrines uh, who's Jesus and how do I get saved uh, that's it that's the, that's the milk because uh, that's what's necessary to even be born again and so but once we're born again now the the purpose in life is then is to grow and mature and be productive um, um, and uh, all the things that were mentioned those are the things that uh, I would classify as meat we could probably take some time and think of many other things. I've got over 50 playlists on my channel, uh, Brother Luke, and um, many of them are topical studies and probably each one of those topics, we could call that meat because they're, they're su theological subjects apart from who is Jesus and how do you get saved. So I would say everything apart from that, but if you don't get that first part right, um, then everything else is uh, meaningless because I mean, and actually, there are uh, there are some theologians that I've I've studied who are fantastic in various uh, theological realms, but they they have not under ever been able to understand that works don't save us, and and so um, some people can uh, uh, they can spend their whole lives studying and mastering other uh, Bible subjects, but it's all futile. What does it matter if you if you don't get the, the first part right and you're born again? So uh, 
Uh, I think bo what both you said, said were uh, really interesting to me. And, uh, I didn't think any of it wouldn't apply. Uh, I'd say spiritual battles and growing and maturing uh, in discipleship and service. Those are the things that that uh, we would probably uh, most obvious to us that it's it's uh, meat, not milk. Uh, Any more, uh, Renee or Jordan? Yeah, I would just like to say because a lot of people, you know, when you walk into that pastoral office of your church, you see the nice wall decorated with all these certificates and degrees. Um, but then the moment you ask, what's the gospel? It's just, it's blank. And something that I've been struggling with because I'm trying to um, get ordained for purposes in my ministry and what I'm trying to do, um, there's all these programs and all these things. And uh, the question, because I just got so fed up with it because the one church that I, I just want to be biblically ordained. And the one church that I was trying to go to to get it through was my hometown church. And they there's like this huge program you have to go through. And I was like, oh, okay. So can you tell me what program Paul had to go through or what degree he got? Where did he go to school? Like the only qualification to be able to deliver meat onto other people and grasp that meat and digest that meat is the Holy Spirit. And it goes back to what we were talking about the other night is if you're not feeding that spirit, you are going to be on milk your entire life. And there is such a beauty once you start to like, the word just comes alive in your life when you dive in. But if you're just sitting there with your daily bread devotional, just reading one verse at a time and then reading somebody's commentary about it, it's not really doing much. So that's what I would add. Thank you, brother. That's interesting that you have this ambition to uh, get ordained. Um, I was ordained by a group called Bible Believers, and it's an organization of nationwide organization of street preachers. And uh, it wasn't something I asked for or uh, sought, but it is just at our annual meetings, they ordained certain people and ordained me. But I, I've never felt that it had any meaning to me I, I, or any uh, necessity. But uh, if you want to, be in an organization, in a denomination, and and uh, advance in their in their uh, hierarchy. That's a, that will be a, a, an essential thing you have to have, I guess. Uh, 